Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. My name's Scott, and I'm glad to see you here today. We're going to plant some squash in containers. Let's go look. All right, so today I've got some containers, some typical containers from the big box stores. I think I got some at Home Depot, some at Walmart. And uh, Sam and I went through and bought some containers last night and some uh, potting mix because we're running low on our, on our reserves. So we're going to show you what we do to plant um, in containers. And this year I'm, I'm doing squash. I'm going to use a, a method that I've learned from Gary at the Rusted Gardener. So thanks, Gary. And uh, I'm going to modify that just a little bit uh, because I don't have all the, all the things that, uh, that he suggests. But I've got enough things that we can uh, make our own go at it. And so we're going to see how squash grows in containers this year. I've got some seeds started, but um, I've also got a couple plants that I bought because I, I wanted some variety. And so let's get to planting. As for size, uh, you can grow in smaller containers, but you have to take care of your plants a little, a little more attentively. You have to keep on top of watering. You have to keep on top of fertilizing. Uh, this is about the size container I like for a, a single plant that uh, will give me a, a much better, uh, much better performance throughout the hot summers. But you got to watch out on these containers because they usually come with no holes on them. Uh, this is a small version, but you can also buy larger versions of these, and you've seen them. They don't have any drainage in them. Now, a lot of people, and me included, will drill holes in the bottom and let them drain out the bottom, but you can also drill holes in the sides and get yourself a water reservoir. Some people will put these in an actual tray and uh, pour water in that tray and water from the bottom, and that forms a water reservoir as well, but I'm going to uh, form a, a reservoir in the bottom by drilling my holes about uh, an inch, a couple inches up the side. Now you gotta watch out though, some of these that you buy already have a water reservoir built in. And so this, you can see has holes down in the bottom and uh, these holes uh, allow for drainage, but it drains into this tray and it's a built in tray. And I'm not sure how effective this is, but we're gonna try it and I'm not gonna drill any holes in this one. Uh, we're gonna use these containers as is. <coughs> If I find that I need to drill some holes, it's an easy matter. Just come in and take your drill and punch some holes in there. But I've got these other containers as well. Let me show those to you. I have these, I have these uh, plastic containers that I got at, uh, at, the, at the Walmart. Now, I don't really like Walmart, but uh, they had good price on some containers here. And, and they feel like they're pretty thick, and that's what I need. I need thick around here because that container I just showed you over there is going to last me three years max because the sun's going to brittle that plastic up and it's going to crack. Uh, there are no holes in the bottom if I could get this up so I'm gonna have to drill some holes in here and I'm gonna drill them just above here about about two inches up and that will allow us to have a reservoir in the bottom of this container now I don't think I want to go any higher than this that's about three inches right about there that's gonna be my my deepest water reservoir at three inches. All right, so first, I'm gonna put some hardwood mulch down in the bottom of these containers. And I've done this with all my container plants. And it just forms a nice little uh, absorbent, uh, absorbent area where the water can collect and, uh, and, uh, and it retains moisture really well. So I put about an inch down in there and it also helps to keep, if you got some fine potting stuff, uh, if you're planting in a little finer potting mix, it helps it to keep from going out your holes. So I put a little bit of that in there. Now this stuff is pretty fine, and it's hardwood, so it really holds onto the moisture. And uh, this has really begun to compost a bit. I can feel the heat in there, and that's good too. Um, there is a downside to that. I'll talk to that in a second. The downside is that as your wood breaks down, it uh, competes with the plant and takes away nutrients uh, from your soil. So I'm gonna put some fertilizer down in there. Just a basic all around fertilizer. I've got a lot of this uh, Dr. Earth. And so I'm gonna put about a cup, a good handful down in there. That will help compensate for the nutrients that that process of breaking down that wood ties up. So the plant will have all this fertilizer available to it when it gets down there. What I'm going to add next is just some of my uh, of last year's garden mix, uh, potting mix. Um, it's kind of depleted, so I'm going to mix in some compost with it as well. I've 
going to add some garden lime to, to provide calcium for these plants because like I said this, this soil is last year's garden soil which was depleted of most of its nutrients. I've added in some, uh, some compost to this but I'm also going to put in a, a, like a little handful of garden lime and mix that in. I use this brand. You can use any brand you find. That's just what my local garden center carries. And so I'm going to put in a good handful of it. And then I'll mix that in really well. Garden lime uh, is a good, quick way to make calcium available to your plants. Now I'm just going to top it off now and bring it up to about uh, two inches from the top. Maybe three inches from the top. I got to leave some room for, for mulch and you want mulch on top to help uh, you know retain moisture in here. I'm going to add just a little bit more of this fertilizer just to the top. I want to mix that in. I know there's some earthworms in here. Uh, I saw them. They came out of the bin that I keep my uh, my recycled materials in, and uh, I got a lot of earthworms in there because that's good uh, good heavy organic uh, material in there. And those worms love it. So having a few worms in here is not going to hurt anything. In fact, it'd be really good for the garden. So uh, let's get to plant. This is Black Beauty zucchini. It's an heirloom. There appear to be two plants in there. I'm going to plant them both right now, and I will probably trim this one out of there once they get established, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to stress them out just yet. I'm going to see which one uh, really takes off. Now we want to put some mulch in here. And I'm going to use the same hardwood mulch that I used before. This mulch will also help to minimize soil splash. You don't want your, your soil with all the, all the microorganisms growing down in there splashing up on your plant when it rains. And uh, so something about uh, mulch is that it, it really helps to minimize that. You'll get a little bit, but not as much as you just had bare soil there. The mulch is always, always, always a good idea. It does a good job of retaining moisture keeping your weeds down. Now we're not really going to have much of a trouble with weeds uh, considering that this plant is going to grow enormous. It's going to spill out from the sides of this container and we may want to support it with a, a tomato cage if it looks big enough. <laughs> we keep these leaves kind of, kind of going upward and that will help with pests and disease. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's mulch and that's what we're going to do on, the, on these and that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to water it in using a, a mild fish emulsion fertilizer. This is high in nitrogen. It's a 5 -1 -1. These are already uh, growing plants and I want them to really get a good start in this. I want this to be readily available to the plant and so a, uh, a uh, water soluble uh, fertilizer is readily available to your plant. You don't have to wait for the biology in the soil to break down your fertilizer like the stuff we put in there earlier. That's going to be kind of slow release and it's going to release as the organisms in the soil work down that fertilizer and release the nutrients. But this stuff <coughs> is available right away. <coughs> it's also very attractive to dogs, so uh, keep that in mind. Now you can apply fish emulsion as a foliar feed. So I'm just going to put it all over and not worry about it getting on the plant here. You like that, huh, Phoebe? It might seem savage to come in here and take out one of these two plants. But this container really will only support healthy uh, growth for one whole plant. And so whichever of these really looks the best, and I suspect that one's going to be it, I'll come in and take the other one out by just snipping it off at the ground. And uh, yeah, we're going to let that one grow up because it's going to fill this container. It's going to need everything in this container. And we'll do the same for that one over there. Got our squash in, so I've got several more, but uh, I gotta wait for those little seedlings to come up and get true leaves and, and uh, establish themselves before I plant them in those square containers. But uh, yeah, follow us and uh, watch the progress. I'm gonna update you on, on how these do over the season and we're gonna watch and see what kind of pests we get. The thing with squash is that you almost always, around here almost always, you get borers. 
and those are those little worms that bore into the stem down at the base and they destroy your crop real quick. And so it's really a race to see if you can get fruit before the bugs find it. So hopefully maybe this will help us in, in tending it and caring for it. Uh, will help us to uh, maybe avoid some of the common problems you get with squash and, and, and um, well, we'll see. So follow our channel and look for updates throughout the growing season on these squash plants and uh, we'll keep you updated. And uh, later in the season, we'll also have some recipes and cook some of this stuff because man, that's good stuff. Thanks for joining us on Black Gumbo. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. That really helps us and encourages us. Like us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.